Shiva, on the other hand, deep in meditation atop the cold Mount Kailash, reminded unaware of what was going on, much to the concern of her parents. The determined Pavadi made the Adro's journey to Kailash and began serving Shiva. She took care of the surroundings, brought him fruit and made garlands for him every day. She wanted to be there the moment the op open opponent his eyes so they could marry as soon as possible. Sh the god sighed with relief and hoped that Shiva would soon awaken from his penance. Days, months and years passed, but Shiva showed no signs of emerging from his medication. If he did not open his eyes, he would never see Parvati with Miyand that he would marry her or have a son. And if the current state of affairs continued, Taraka's cruel begin would be the end of everybody. Frustrated, the gods decide to take matters into their own hands. All the realms were a grave danger. They had to intervene the force Shiva to awaken. But who would take the risk? No one there offered to be the one to disturb Shiva's penance and become the target of his famous temper. Everyone knew that when he was extremely angry, his third eye would open and immediately spew a great fire that destroyed everything in its path. And yet the task needed to be done, the gods decided to be approached the diplomatic lord Vishnu and besiege him to find a way to guarantee Shiva and Parvati's marriage. All right, let's see how things turn out, Vishnu said with mysterious smile. The god and goddess of eternal love, Manmada and Rati were a lovely couple. Their affection for each other blossomed visibly during the spring season and their companions included flowers, birds, cuckoos, parrots, honeybees and lush green trees. One day, Mahatma's father, Vishnu, summoned him to his adobe and said, I have a difficult task for you. You are the only god with the ability to walk Shiva from the stupor. Once you do that, he will open his eyes and see the beautiful Pavadi. As you are the god of love, you must use the power of your gentle arrows to make him fall in love with her. An alarmed Manmata replied, Dear father, you are asking me to play with fire. Shiva is no ordinary god. He is a lord of destruction. His temper uh, is uh, fearsome and you know what will happen if he opens his fiery third eye. Didn't you see this thunder of Nritya after Dakshayani jumped into fire? Even you couldn't pacify him. And Lord uh, Brahma just about managed to calm him down before he destroyed the whole world. So how do you think I can withstand uh, his uh, wrath? I fear this will be the end of me. Please let me go. Vishnu then said st sternly, Mahatma, there is no uh, saying that Shiva can be uh, ferocious, but don't forget that he is also exceptionally kind. So, he forgave his father-in-law and brought him back to life. He is the only god who grants boons to his devotees, irrespective of the cost of himself. That's how much his followers mean to him. Even if something unfortunate were to happen, trust me, he will be the first to save you. This is no ordinary task. The fate of the world rests on it. The, but the Manmata and Ravi were still hesitant. It is your duty, insisted of Vishnu. Taraka has become such a huge menak 
and nobody wants to challenge him the world is suffering manmada and if you don't make shiva fall in love with parvati he will neither marry her nor produce the son fated to bring about taraka's death the asura will continue to torment every living being and you will be the only one responsible for it manmada understood that he had no choice in the matter he reluctantly made his way to mount kailash with prithi there they saw parvati gazing lovely at shiva who was deep in meditation unaware of her presence manmada good work he called upon all his uh, companions for help which included his vehicle a parrot a swarm or humping honey bees and vasanta the god of spring within minutes and cold and harsh moment kailash was transformed into a magical and a springtime the ice melted and streams of cool blue water began to flow melodically the most covered leaves changes to be to a brilliant reddish green and stone in the light of the sun as the birds started chirping and sighing the affair was filled with a heady fragrance as buds bloomed into brightly colored flowers the whole scene was perfectly for some romance but nothing happened shiva remained obvious to his surroundings ready and manmada didn't give up that easily being accomplished dancers they put up the entrancing performance in front of the motionless shiva he still didn't stir parvati on the other hand was enchanted by the beauty of the settling she prayed fervently to shiva <laughs> Uh, to open his eyes days went to by to luck my mother became intensely restless none of his schemes were working as a last resort he picked up his blows uh, of sugar cane and five flowers arrows each arrow was tipped with a different kind of flower white lotus blue lotus jasmine mango blossom and a flower from the ashoka the tree their arrows were so potent that the slightest contact with any of them was enough to most of them immediately fall madly in love with the nearest person manmada shot shiva with all five arrows at once which gently touched the gourd and fell to the ground she was is flattered open he stared at her without blinking his eyes burning with indecent joy who is disturbed my penak he thought and then he saw manmada who smiled at him in the hope of friendly response ashura was silent manmada assumed that his arrows had begun to work their magic however the smile of manmada faced only intense to shiva further so did the third eye open it was said to be the only instance of shiva opening his third eye Manmada was reduced to to heap of his ashes within seconds the sight of the streaming mounds calmed shiva down and the closed his third eye then he seemingly a simply stood up the walk to away noticing neither parvati nor rati he was frustrated by his inability to concentrate and returned to his medication his penance was over and poor Maha- manmada the handsome god of love and sacrifice his life or for nothing rati fell to the ground almost faint and with grief sobbing she cried out oh my dear husband we are men to be inspirable how can i go on without you why didn't she want to turn me to ashes too pavadi ran to rati to console her the best uh, she could she was filled with intense mixed emotions herself she was distressed at pain by manmada's faith for the had died trying to help her she was also insulted by the fact that she was had not even noticed her presence despite her devotion she made up her mind i am not going to chase shiva anymore one day he will come to me on his own and until then i will perform penance 
having desired her course of action she left mount kailash devastated and helpless prati prayed to vishnu father you said that you would support the guide was we needed you know vishnu immediately appeared in front of prati shocked and dejected by the turns of events don't worry my daughter he said he will revive manmata to he will no longer possess the human form he will arise uh, in the thoughts of people and you will remain inseparable whoever thinks about love will inevitably evoke you and manmada he will henceforth be known as manoj the one who emerges from the mind of ananga the one without a body the whole world will remember both you sacrifices this incident the bumbling of mahatma is associated with holi which is usually followed by the light drizzle the next day the train is believed to made up of the tears that 